In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate the factorial of a number with a loop using C. So using a loop to calculate the factorial of a number is considered an imperative solution to the problem. There are other ways to solve the problem, such as using recursion. So the factorial of a non-negative integer n is the product of all positive integers less than or equal to n. So for example, the factorial of three would be three times two times one, which would give us six. The factorial of five would be five times four times three times two times one, which would give us 120. And the factorial of eight would be the product of all the integers between eight and one, and that would give us 40,320. In general, we can say the factorial of n is going to be n multiplied by n minus one, multiplied by n minus two, all the way down to two multiplied by one. So let's write a program to calculate the factorial of a number with a loop. In our main function, we'll declare and initialize an int variable n, and we'll set n to five. We're going to try to calculate the factorial of n. Now n might be set by user input or some other method. We don't know what n is. We want our program to calculate the factorial of n no matter what n is. What we need to do is calculate the product of all the integers between n and one. So what we'll do is declare another variable called product. And we'll initialize product to one because one multiplied by any value will just give us back that value. We're going to use the product variable to build up the factorial one multiplication at a time. We'll have a loop perform these multiplications. We'll have a loop with a counter variable i that we're going to initialize to one. Then we'll have i is less than or equal to n and i plus plus. So this loop has a counter variable i that's going to start off at one. It's going to be incremented by one with each loop iteration and it's going to stop once i is no longer less than or equal to n. We could output i in the loop body just to see what's happening. We'll have printf i colon percent d backslash n for a new line and then i here to output the value of i in place of this percent d. So if we save compile and run our program, we get i is one, i is two, i is three, i is four, and i is five. That's exactly the numbers that we need to multiply together to get the factorial of n, which is five. So what we can do is instead of outputting i, we can have product is equal to product multiplied by i. So what this is going to do is multiply the product by i and store the result back into product. That's going to have the effect of computing the factorial because we keep taking the result of the last multiplication, which is stored in product, and multiplying it by the next value i. And altogether, we'll get the product of all these integers between one and n. Now we could shorten this a little bit. We could have here star equals. What this will do is multiply i by product and store the result back into product, just as before. But this is a short form version of the same thing. So after the loop is done its work, we can output the factorial. We'll have here printf five factorial is equal to percent d backslash n, and we'll output the product. If we save compile and run our program, we get that five factorial is 120, which is correct. Now, one thing we may wanna do is put this code to calculate the factorial of a number inside a function. We could have a function called factorial. And that function could return an int value, the calculated factorial. And the function could accept the integer n as an argument. We could provide a definition of the function down here. So what we could do is actually copy this code here. We'll copy this part of the code here into the function. And we're going to calculate the factorial exactly as we did in the main function, but this time we'll be using the function parameter n 
for our n value. Now, once we've calculated the factorial, we're going to return that calculated value. We're going to return product. We can now call the function in our main function. So in our main function here, we could have printf and call the function with five. So we'll have factorial with five as an argument. We can save our program, compile it and run it. And we get that the factorial of five is 120. So the program is still working. We're just now using a function to calculate the factorial of a number. We could call this function for every integer from one to 30. So we could have here for int i is equal to one, i is less than or equal to 30, i plus plus. So this for loop is going to have a counter variable i that's gonna go from one to 30 by one. What we'll do is output i here. So we'll have percent d to output i, and then we'll have i here to output that i value. Then we'll call the factorial function with i. So now if we save, compile, and run our program, we get the calculated factorials from one to 30. Now down here, I have the correct factorial values. So we can see seven factorial is 5,040, and here we get 5,040. So things seem correct. If we scroll down enough though, here to the factorial of 13, we get that the expected result is this number here with 6227. But the actual result we got is this number here, 1932 and so on. So something is going wrong. What's happening is that the int variable in C can only store integers of a certain range. And what's happening is that the factorials of even these small numbers very quickly exceed the range of the int type. So for example, if we look at the factorial of 20, there are a lot of digits in that number. What we could do to improve things a little bit is use a different type. So there's a type called size underscore t in C. That type can store larger non-negative integers than int. We could try to change the type used. Instead of int, we'll have size underscore t. So we're going to replace all the usages of int with size underscore t. And then here, we're going to have percent zu and percent zu because zu can be used to output very large non-negative integers. So we can save, compile, and run the program. And if we scroll down again, we'll see that our actual result for the factorial of 13 now matches the expected result. If we keep scrolling down though, to the factorial of 21, we can now see the actual result does not match the expected result. So even when using size underscore t, we're going to run into this issue. Now there's another way to solve this problem that will allow us to calculate larger factorial values using a technique that's most often called big integer multiplication. We could also calculate a factorial using a recursive solution, which involves a function that calls itself. I'll post videos to both those techniques in this video description. So this is how we can calculate a factorial with a loop using C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.